What is going on guys? So today I'm gonna to show you guys my exact workflow from start to finish through Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, and Photoshop to make your guys' photos look like visuals of Julius on Instagram. So we're gonna take this raw photo that I took in Iceland and we're gonna turn it into this finished photo that kind of just looks like a dream-like, fantasy-like place. So let's hop right in my computer and show you guys how I did it. <laughs> So today I'm going to edit this photo from start to finish and this is a single exposure I took in Iceland at Selfoss Waterfall. Uh, I shot this on my Sony a7 III 1635mm uh, G Master and I shot it at f8.0, 30 second exposure because I think I had an ND 1000 filter on and ISO 100. Um, sometimes for photos like this I would have to take a double exposure but the light was pretty solid where I was able to get a really nice single exposure here without any of the highlights clipped and still quite a bit of detail in the shadows. So real quick, I'm just gonna go through a base edit. Most of the stuff I'm gonna do is gonna be in Photoshop, but I wanna get a nice solid base to work with. Get the white balance where I would like. All right, so here is our before and here's our after. So that already looks a ton better. So I'm gonna just gonna load this up into Photoshop because that's where we're gonna do most of our work. All right, cool. So first and foremost, I'm gonna do Command J to make a copy of my background layer because I don't want to mess with that in case I need to delete anything. Um, and I'm gonna grab the spot healing brush because I see up here, I've got a little bit of a dirty center. Some of that was popping up with the F8. So just gonna clean up any spots I see. See if there's any in the water. Looks good to me. All right, cool. Just for organization on this tutorial, I'm gonna call that cleanup. And then I work a lot on merge visible layers, which is Command Option Shift E. It's essentially a fresh layer that has all the edits that you have done under it. Um, and on this, I'm gonna do camera raw filter because I want to really exaggerate the sky. So right now, this is gonna affect my whole photo, but I'm only looking at the sky because I really just wanna accentuate and exaggerate the sunrise. And I'm going to be masking this out for down here. So again, just don't worry about that. There's a little bit of fringing with the purples there. So don't want that. That looks pretty solid. All right, so I'm gonna click OK. And to get this on just the sky, I'm gonna add a layer mask. And because we have a white layer mask, um, I'm gonna have to brush a black brush and kind of mask all of this out. Or I can do Command-I to invert my layer mask. And then I can grab a white brush since we inverted it to a black layer mask. Grab my brush tool, we've got a soft edge brush, opacity at 100%. So I'm gonna get the opacity at 100% for the sky. And I'm doing this very rough, I'm not making a selection or anything, mainly because I don't think I need to in this case. I'll grab, oops, a 50% opacity brush for kind of the blending line, because you don't want it to look You don't want it to look unnatural. Um, so now I'm gonna switch to a black brush. Maybe these rocks got just a little too much of that. Um, I mean, you can make an exact selection of this, but when you ha are shooting sunrise or something like this, you know, the color does bleed into the foreground. So like that, in my opinion, still looks super natural. Uh, I'll show you before and after. Yeah, so I think that looks solid. Um, and then I'm going to make a dodge burn layer, which is option 
and then new layer button. And the way I do dodge burn layers is I'm gonna put my blend mode to soft light and I'm gonna check this box for fill with soft light neutral color, 50% gray. So right now I have this gray layer and anything darker than that will essentially burn the image. Anything brighter will dodge the image. And you can do this with white, you can do it with black, you can do it with a range of colors, whatever you'd like. Right now I essentially just want to get this water accentuated in color um, and vibrant. So I will probably just mostly a white brush, but a little touch of blue, you can see right here compared to white. Um, just because there is some blue tones in the water and you know, water is naturally a little bit blue. It's not always just white. All right. And for this opacity, depending on the strength and you know, if you always go too much, you can change the overall layers opacity. So you can just go by and kind of, you know, brush it in as you'd like. I'm gonna undo that because I do something called luminosity mask. So I have a plugin where I can essentially make a selection of my image. So I'm gonna make a selection of the light. Um, and what this is, is pretty much everything that is light in here is gonna be in my selection. So I'm ignoring the sky. Um, I am just gonna make a selection of that, super rough, super broad. I'm gonna do Command H to hide those little squiggly lines. And now come to my dodge burn layer. I've got my light blue. And now that I have a selection, I can do this at a pretty high opacity brush. And since the sky has some lights in it, I'm gonna do my best to avoid that. Grab a 100% opacity brush for this main part of the waterfall right there. I think that looks pretty solid. Show you before, after. I'm gonna do one more. So option, new layer, soft light, neutral color, and just give this another passing on that to really bring out kind of the craziness of the scene and kind of just everything with the water. You know, this is a super crazy waterfall. Um, and I'm gonna do Command D to deselect uh, my selection. And I'm gonna just show you what these layers did. So like I said in the beginning, you can manually brush in everything you'd like to dodge. But if you download Luminosity Mask like this, you can make such exact selections that this is what we just did. So I did get a little bit of sky. I don't think that's the end of the world though, but I am pretty happy with how it looks. I'll show you before and after both layers. Just kind of like dull and you know, not really popping. So I think these two layers really, really help. I'm gonna make one more merge visible layer. So Command Option Shift E. And now I, want, I, I think this is a great photo. I think it's finished, but I kind of want to take this to a more dreamy level. I want it to be more intense, more vibrant and more just kind of overall dreamy, you know? rather than being ultra realistic, like a little bit of a dreamy factor I think can be cool in some images. So I'm gonna play around with some of the tools here in the adjustments tab. First and foremost, the curves. And this is where I'm going to clip a lot of the darks in here and kind of bring it that fuzzy soft blacks. Um, as you can see, it really dulls out the darks when you pull the tone curve up like that. And I'm gonna balance that find it somewhere where I like it. That might be too much on the blacks. And then just balance that with a little bit of the white. Ooh, that's crazy. So you can see before and after, and if that's too much for you, you could always drop the opacity like that. Actually, I think I will drop it a little, maybe like 80. I think it looks pretty cool, very dreamy uh, for sure. And I'm gonna add a brightness contrast layer. Um, and what I want to do is I wanna brighten up and contrast the central area to keep the viewer, keep their eye in this general area. Um, and then I will probably do a second brightness and contrast layer to kind of dull out the edges, sort of like a vignette, but just to really keep the viewer's eyes central where all of this 
waterfall and craziness is you know kind of taking place so I'm gonna bring up my brightness but I want to make sure I don't clip the waterfall because it's very close as you can see let's see I think I can get away with like 26 and contrast maybe 32 let's see about that for now uh, I'm gonna invert this because I'd rather brush it in where I'd like it. So with a black layer mask, grab a white brush. Soft edge brush, size is good. And I'm gonna grab like a, let's say 30% opacity brush, just so I can give it a few passes. And really just kind of focus on this area. So that's where I want the effect. let's see a before and after just really kind of keeps the viewer engaged in the central area do one more brightness contrast layer take the brightness down quite a bit and the contrast all right cool same thing i actually you know i'm going to keep this i'm not going to invert this so i'm going to grab a black brush and now i'm going to just take it out of the center of this. Maybe a little bit less opacity brush. Awesome, I think that looks solid. I am gonna drop that opacity a little bit and it's a little intense. So I think that looks good and it's definitely getting really to like a dreamlike state, you know, definitely kinda doesn't look like a supernatural photo anymore and kind of looks like a dreamy, not animated scene, but it just kind of looks crazy. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna make a dodge burn layer again and I'm gonna kind of paint in my own vignette. So when you use a vignette that Lightroom or Photoshop offers, sometimes you can see a very obvious like oval halo in your image um, and I don't want that. Sometimes a little bit I like but I'm just gonna grab a black brush, let's say 20% opacity. I'm gonna zoom out a bit and you know, just kind of burn the areas that I don't think need much detail to be shown. Like that looks solid so as you can see if you look closely here like if i was just to use photoshop's tool i would have a really strict oval but here i can kind of focus on this corner and the sky where i just wanted a little bit here but not too much make a merge visible layer and one thing i notice is my horizon is slightly off um i think i shot this where the waterfall looked perfectly on horizon so maybe it was just the landscape here went down a little bit so i'm going to come to edit transform warp and i'm just going to pull this up a little bit kind of just move it you can move it however you want as you can see, but I'm just gonna move it to where I think it looks nice and level. Careful if you move in at all, because then you will kind of lose your image. So make sure you don't crop anything out of your frame. I think that looks perfect, subtle, but pretty solid. Let's see, yeah, that looks much better. Um, and then I'm also gonna make one more merge, vis merge visible layer and make a selection of the bottom of my image, pretty much everything about the sky. And I'm going to do Command T, or you can come up to Edit, trans or right here, Free Transform. But yeah, Command T also works. And if you move this, it's gonna be locked on orientation, so it's gonna move your whole image. But if you hold Shift and move it, you can kind of change the orientation however you'd like. So I just wanna stretch this a little bit because these bottom rocks here aren't too pertinent to the image and I want to just kind of make this waterfall seem more dramatic and kind of larger in scale. Click enter. 
Command D to deselect. And now you can see before and after. I think that helps a lot. So we fix the horizon, stretch the waterfall. And now I'm actually gonna grab the spot healing brush tool and just kind of get this out just because it's distracting and not necessary to the image. So I'm really liking where this is at. I'm gonna do one more curves layer because I think in the brightness contrast layers I got a little punchy on the contrast. So I'm just gonna do one more kind of S curve to really make this dreamy. I think that looks solid. So I'll make one last merge visible layer. I'm pretty happy with this. It's kind of exactly what I was going for, just kind of a really dreamlike, fantasy-like scene. Um, you can see we did quite a bit of layers, so I'm gonna take all of these off so we can kind of go through the steps. So this background layer had our very light and subtle kind of uh, just Lightroom edit, and then we did a cleanup. You can't really notice it because it's on finer parts of the image. And then we intensified the sky, uh, kind of dodged the waterfall, added a curves layer, two different brightness and contrast layers, added a dark vignetting, fixed the horizon, stretched the waterfall, and took out a little cleanup here, and then the curves to kind of take out a little bit of that ending contrast, and that brings us to our final image. So I think that is solid. Hopefully you guys learned quite a bit in this tutorial and saw some cool workflow. But yeah, thanks for watching. And if you guys have any questions or anything, just leave them in the comments. Um, or if there's any tutorials you'd like to see me do, let me know. More than happy to. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.